You're watching NFL Daily. I am Tom Danny. Today's show made possible by, by the all-new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. We will tell you all about the latest and greatest in men's grooming from Manscaped as part of today's show, which focuses on Mel Kuyper's newest 2024 NFL Draft Big Board. The simplest, non-mean way to say it, it's interesting. The first names make sense. The rest of it is it's curious. So let's dive into it. Number one, no change here, Caleb Williams out of USC. Okay, I and mean, then it makes sense, right? Now, there's been some up and downs out, out of Caleb Williams. There's too many times he just doesn't want to operate well enough in structure for me, but the out-of-structure stuff is absolutely unique. I get the trend is to be mean to him because he hyped him up so much. That's why I give him a full year, but... I do like Caleb Williams quite a bit. Drake May is number two on this list. He also had the tough, tough loss against Virginia, by the way. It's again, because no quarterback's perfect. I think he's been very good. He reminds me some of, of Justin Herbert. Uh, these are by far your two betting favorites to be number one with a heavy lean still towards Caleb Williams. Who do you think ends up being the number one pick in the 2024 NFL draft? CW or Caleb Williams? DM for Drake May, or you can type in O for other. Get those predictions in for me in the comment section right now. I think pretty clearly your top non-quarterback prospect is Marvin Harrison Jr. It, it really is like it's Marvin Harrison's kid, except he's bigger, which is kind of crazy to think about there. He has, he's probably not going to get the same grade, not going to be as, as rare a project as Calvin Johnson, but he might be the best receiver prospect since Calvin Johnson was. Number four, Brock Bowers. Unfortunately, we might not see him play again this year after the ankle surgery. Uh, he still had 545 yards this season before the ankle injury, which is astounding production for a tight end. To put it in perspective, you know, Marvin Harrison had barely 200 yards more as a receiver with an extra game. So Bowers, a special prospect, it's a matter of, how early can you take a tight end? That's tough for teams. Mel Kuyper remains on his Shadur Sanders hype train. He has not backed off that, saying he's a future first-round pick. Uh, the Buffalo's defense is the real problem in the offensive line. You know, Shadur threw for 400 yards and five touchdowns. He's been electric. I do wonder, because he would not be the first quarterback taken, could he go back to school next year? Instead of being maybe fighting to be a top five, top ten pick, could he just come back to school and be the early favorite to be the first overall pick? He might just do it. Olu Fashinu out of Penn State. You know, I'll, I'll give JT Tui Malo credit from Ohio State. He got the best of Fashinu a couple times. Hasn't happened that often uh, in the course of his career at Penn State. Actually got dinged for a sack for once. That's very unusual for Fashinu. But he's an awesome tackle prospect. I think he would have been the first tackle taken had he turned pro last year. Now, ignoring the positional value among quarterbacks, et cetera, who is the best player in the 2024 NFL draft? Sound off in the, at the pinned comments of today's video. If the ad comes on YouTube, take advantage. Head down there and go vote. Number seven, uh, this has been my guy for a while, Roma Dunzier, the wide receiver out of Washington. Bunch of great productions. He's got fantastic body control. Big guy at 6'3", 215, listed size. I like Adunzier a lot. Now we get crazy with it. Uh, Troy Faltuna, Fal I believe I pronounce it. Faltuna. I like the player. Let me be clear on that. I do think his best fit is at guard. Um, but being eighth on this list, I, I, I can't get on board with this one. He's been good this year. In fact, he's been pretty good. I, I don't. I, I like him as like, ooh, surprise first round pick name maybe. Eighth overall is maybe the NFL's higher on him. That's why Mel put him on there. I don't have him eighth. Um, I, I maybe like a day two pick right now is a bit more realistic for him. Maybe I'm wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. That is shockingly aggressive ranking uh, for him. I do like Cooper Gene though at number nine. We can argue about that fair catch call or not. Uh, he is he's a playmaker, not just on defense, but special teams. He can play, I think, every spot in the secondary. He can be a, a 
four-down player, which isn't that common for defensive backs on returns at least. Big fan of his game. I think he should be a first-round pick. I also love Keon Coleman. Uh, it's very telling how bad the Michigan State passing offense was and the offense overall, despite having Jaden Reed, who was a, a day-two pick, and a likely first-round pick in Keon Coleman. I mentioned the body control for Roma Dunzie, even better for Keon Coleman. He might be my number two receiver when it's all said and done. A strong class behind Marvin Harrison this year. Ladies and gentlemen, some fantastic news from Manscaped. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is out. Yeah, I am lucky to be one of the first people to try out the new Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. They feature a new cutting edge design and next generation dual skin safe blade heads for different shades or shaves. It's a spaceship. Take your boys downstairs to the next level. It's the fifth generation trimmer from Manscaped. It is a game changer as well. It's got two heads, right? A standard trimmer blade for taking a little bit off the top and a new foil blade to go for that smooth finish wherever your heart desires. Get 20% off and free shipping with code CHAT over at manscaped.com slash chat. That's 20% off and free shipping with code chat over at manscaped.com slash chat. Your balls have been through enough, folks. It's time to go ultra with Manscaped. Number 11, Dallas Turner. I think he is one of the better edge rushers. Teaser, I think the best edge rusher is not on Mel's big board. We'll get to that later on, I promise you. Uh, I, but I, 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 I like Turner a lot. He plays bigger than his size. He's a very good pass rusher. Joe Alt slid down the rankings uh, for Mel, which I think was a mistake. I think he's even better than he was last year. Knocked out some of the issues that uh, I think he had previously. I think he's your second best offensive lineman in the class. 13, Malik Neighbors. Again, it's a very good receiver class. It's Neighbors at 13. Amika Abuka at number 14. I think it's a, he's a little bit banged up right now. I get that. I think he's a little bit high. At this moment, I don't think it should have four receivers in the top 14. I think that's just a little bit too much emphasis on the premium players, but he's, he's a, a likely first-round pick, I'd say, at least now in, in October. Things change. Kalen King, number 15, don't hate it. Good, good football player. It should be telling, by the way. We are at number 15, and Kalen King is, I believe, the number three defensive player we have discussed so far. Top 15, right? Cooper DeGina at number nine, Dallas Turner, and now King. It's not a great defensive class. My issue is that I don't think King is the number one corner. Another, another wild one. Uh, Landon Jackson. To be quite honest, Mel basically says he put him on here because he had three and a half sacks against Alabama, which is great. Now, Caden Proctor has been pretty rough as, as a true freshman, but he's got five and a half sacks all season long. So that's multiple games. He had one sack against BYU, one against Kent. I, this, this, this is a straight-up overreaction. I like Jackson. I'm not sure he's going to go pro. If he does, he will get drafted in the top 100, I'd say. But putting him at 16 just reeks of, great against Bama, change it type of deal. I, I, I think that's an overreaction from Mel. Now, if you are excited for the 2024 NFL draft, this is your spot, man. Hit that sub button. Right now, for more free NFL Draft YouTube videos all season long. Cloyd McKinstry, who had, was a fringe top 20 player last time from Mel, which I was kind of surprised by. I, look, how many times did the Tennessee target him in that game? Tennessee versus Alabama, they got all these great receivers. They want to air it out, et cetera. I think it is very telling when opposing teams are like, yeah, you know what, we're going to try to avoid you in that game and not, not look your way because... You're just better than our guys. I think that's a great indication of, of how good somebody actually is. In that football game, McKinstry was targeted four times. One catch, uh, 10 yards. That's it. That's awesome play. Another man player, J.C. Latham. He's really good at right tackle. I don't know if he can play left tackle. Um, I think he's been very solid so far this year. Could play some guard maybe as well. Like him in the, in the top 20. Jared Verse should be falling. Uh, I, I think that is the, the correct, I don't even call it an overreaction, just a reaction. Two sacks against Virginia Tech two weeks ago. He's got two and a half sacks all year long. He's, he's gotten some pressures, don't get me wrong, but 
to be in that first defensive player draft, a wide open race, by the way, got to do more. I do love some love for Troy Franklin, not to phrase my words really there. He's a number one playmaker for Oregon at wide receiver, has had a lot of success with Bo Nix, averaging like almost four yards per route run. Another big target. Last year's class had zero X receivers. It was like John Domingo and nobody else, and he got overdrafted as a result. This year's class, full of X wide receivers. Michael Penix Jr. out of Washington. A tricky evaluation, frankly. Um, the medical's a massive red flag that is going to be very tough for us to really figure out what's going on there. There's also no doubt among college football QBs, he's one of the best ones. And probably should be viewed as your Heisman favorite right now. He also benefits from a great offensive line and great receivers. Not just Roma Dunzier, but Jalen McMillan, uh, Jalen Polk. There's a lot of talent there. There are moments. I don't think the arm is as super strong. The deep ball success is great. Sometimes the intermediate accuracy can tend to, to, to wane. If he's fully healthy, this, this is fine. But he's also going to be 24 years old. 24 years old with an injury history. It's kind of a, a red flag. So will Michael Penix be a first round pick? One for yes or zero for no? Please sound off for me in the comments section right now. Like seeing Jordan Morgan on here, the Arizona OT. A lot of good, these late first round range tackles. Oklahoma, Tyler Guyton, Patrick Paul from Houston and more all stand out to me. Another X receiver. Again, I think there's too many receivers up here overall. It's not that great of a class, Mel. It's a good class. Xavier Leggett, this is one of the biggest risers this year. Uh, he had 18 catches last year, which was 10th on South Carolina's entire team, and now is putting up 19.4 yards per catch. He is already at 36 yards this year, putting up numbers like you put him side by side with Marvin Harris, and you go, oh, they're both pretty good. Yeah, Leggett is awesome. Uh, big guy too, 6'3", 227. I'm sure someone will try to say he's Debo Samuel because they both put at South Carolina. He's not Debo. He's a bigger guy. Drazon Newton, my favorite defense tackle prospect. He's a bit undersized compared to most guys, but hey, he's, he's really good uh, up front. A eighth wide receiver. <laughs> Mel, not eight receivers in the top 25. Come on now. J. Michael Sertivant out of UCLA, who has been good. Don't get me wrong. And he's a solid player. I do not think he's a top 25 player in this class. I think that's a massive overreaction. It, it, he's good. I don't think we should have eight receivers in our top 25 this year. Now, who is Mel Kuyper hating on this video? I have several names I want to get to. I think he is disrespecting. But first, I want to hear from you guys. Sound off in the comment section right now. I think the biggest and frankly unacceptable miss is Leatu Latu out of UCLA, who not only does Mel Kuyper not have in his top 25 at all, Latu is not in. He, or he's, he's, he's number two on his outside linebackers, which also, he also has Barrett Carter as an editor, which makes no sense. His, his ordering never makes sense to me. You're saying he's, he's not, I think he's the best pass rusher in college football right now. It's way too low. J.J. McCarthy, I think we should stop sleeping on him. I know the competition has not, has not been great. And signs, steals, whatever. He's sixth for, for Mel among QBs. How? Quinn Ewers now down to seven as Bo Nix has jumped him again. But Ewers also, I eh, didn't have his best game against Oklahoma, did he? Amarius Mims, I know he's injured. It's a small sample size. He has been really good when he's played. He is not in Mel's top 10 tackles. Doesn't make sense to me. Chop Robinson is the number three or number four outside linebacker. He has Chris Braswell at, at three, which just reeks of Alabama boost. Because I like Braswell. He should not be the number three outside linebacker. Again, use edges, Mel. 2023, my guy. Leonard Taylor, who has made an appearance on this list before. That's fine. Very light on defensive tackles overall. Several names you could go with there. Nate Wiggins, uh, the cornerback from Clemson, was number four on Mel's list. I like him a lot. I think he's a good football player. Denzel Burke, not in the top 10 either. I think that's a mistake. Graham Barton is probably going to move to guard. Mel put him at center, 
which is just tradition in, in general. I've noticed this in, in draft media. If you take a tackle and you say, oh, he's actually a center, it's code for he's been good. I don't know why. I just don't like him that much. That's what it's code for. And then safety, Cameron Kinchins, who I think is a baller, is also Mel's number one safety.